Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskorov from Laravel Daily Team and YouTube channel Laravel Business. And this video will be a comparison of two tools that our team uses almost daily. It's for bug tracking. So for quite a long time, for three or four years, we have been using a tool called Bugsnack, which tracks every bug. So if something happens, it notifies our Slack channel, or email, or whatever you configure. And quite recently, there was a new player in this channel, in the scene, called Flare, uh, released during Laracon EU this year. A uh, combined product by Spati and Beyond Code teams, which is directly specifically to Laravel, so Laravel specific features. And let's test it. Let's test both. I will show you how to install each of them and you will judge for yourself which is better. So for Bugsnack, we create a new project. And the main difference actually uh, that Flare is Laravel specific, which is good uh, because it shows more Laravel uh, tailored stuff. But at the same time, Bugsnack can be used more widely for mobile browser and all of that. So choose for yourself. In our case, we choose server, then we choose language PHP, and then we choose framework called Laravel, and we name our project test Bugsnack. We continue, and then we should receive the instructions. Uh, collaborators, we don't need any collaborators. Uh, installation instruction. Uh, and I have a demo project, just a simple uh, simple project that I've used in other videos, so just registration form, and I will intentionally make some typo, and let's see how those uh, bugs like and flare handles that. So in that project, what do we need? We do, back to instructions, compose a require bug snack. So we go to terminal and copy and paste that. And then I will need to add the provider into app service provider. I'm not sure it may be uh, by default in Laravel 5.6 plus, uh, but just for the sake of following the tutorial, let's add that as well. So this is the config app. I will add that. For now, it will throw error because the installation isn't finished yet, so that class isn't recognized yet, but let's leave it here. Composer takes some time as usual. So it works like Laravel. Interesting that the instruction is for uh, version 2 and the latest version is 3.18. So which means that instruction was uh, written quite a long time ago. Then we have Bugsnack API key, which we should add to .env file here. Bugsnack API key, done. Uh, and then in Laravel 5.6 plus, and I have Laravel 6. It should be 6.4 by this, by today, because they released 6.4.1, I think, this week. Uh, right, and you need to add a channel bug snack here. Uh, so by default, config logging is this file. And by default, it's a single channel. So in here, I need to add bug snack and also add a bug snack driver, which I've done already. So bug snack driver is this one. So driver bug snack. Uh, and finally, no, nothing else. So it's final. Let's see if our composer has finished. Yep, great. So time to test our integration, and this is a simple test which they uh, kind of offer. And let's add it to some, for example, register controller. On the top, I copy and paste all of those use statements, and in the bottom, for example, let's paste it into show registration form. And let's refresh our registration form, which is this one, where you refresh and it should, should throw some exception. Well, it doesn't throw exception visually, but if we go to our bug snack and we refresh the page, we probably will see one error, so two errors. Uh, bug snack not found. I was testing that just 10 minutes ago, well, 20 minutes. And this is the actual runtime exception, which was thrown from controller, and it shows immediately in which controller what is notified and all of the details. Also, it shows the request, the URL, user if there is a session, uh, cookies. So that is the uh, ultimate help why it is worth to uh, pay for such tool. Um, whenever the bug happens for your user and you don't have a way to reproduce that bug, this uh, information is massively helpful. Uh, on what actually happened and what were the parameters of request, device, whatever, like a lot of stuff here. Laravel version, even uh, stack trace also, it shows pretty much the same thing as uh, Laravel stack trace. Now let's try to uh, throw a real exception. For example, this is fine and inside of uh, our register blade, in our dropdown, let's 
let's just make a typo. So for each countries, and I will show, uh, we'll use the same countries, which wouldn't have that ID field. And if we re register, if we refresh our page, we have property ID doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. So that is ignition page by default, Laravel. Uh, and if we go to inbox of test Bugsnag, this is what it's shown. Uh, and this is kind of a problem because uh, it doesn't really show the exact place. It shows redirective authenticated. So I need to click here and see that it's actually happening in register blade. Uh, or look here so it is clear but not I, I mean I do have to spend like five to ten seconds to to understand it but this is how in general how Bugsnag works now let's go to Flare and here I am in Flare dashboard URL is flareapp.io and I create a new project which is test Flare create and also I should get the instructions right so install the package of facade ignition. Right. We get back to our terminal, require facade ignition. Uh, later we will have to add driver flare. Uh, and that's uh, interesting. Would it conflict with Bugsnag or not? Uh, haven't tried it actually both on the same project, but uh, let's try it out. So login, we need to add driver flare. So instead of Bugsnag, actually let's replace it. So flare. And then stack, no, actually driver flare, wrong place. So flare would be a separate driver, uh, driver, and then we add flare here to single flare, ignore exceptions, false. Okay, uh, that is good. Now env file, I'll copy here, copied. Uh, env file would have flare key, and uh, that is really. Uh, awesome because it shows exactly how to test it without any uh, without launching any controller or route or whatever it's just artisan command which we will launch after the composer yeah nothing to install or update probably this uh, uh, this was done already uh, probably interesting because because I do have Laravel 6, probably they changed something in Laravel internal, so that is not even required anymore. Uh, and actually, they could probably sh they could probably ask which version I'm on uh, for new project, as Bugsnag asks what the framework you're on. So this here may take some advantage of which Laravel version. Anyway, uh, that's done, and I think this command should actually do something now. We do flare test. Key specified, configured correctly, try to set an exception. So this probably means that it's successful. And let's refresh the page. Yep, exception, there was one exception. And uh, it actually shows the same thing as an, uh, as an ignition, as it would uh, say on the page. So this is really similar to what user actually saw or should have seen. Uh, and the thing about Flare, their whole uh, positioning and messaging is the share button. So share button, you can share that uh, to some URL. So for example, you could post uh, post that on Laracast or Stack Overflow or send to uh, to a teammate or to a client or to other developer, uh, including what you share. You share. You may hide some user details or stuff like that. So this is the main uh, focus that they were presenting during Laracon EU, and that's Flare interesting twist. So Bugsnag, I'm not sure if they do that share. Maybe there is something there, uh, but it's all about integration. So Bugsnag integrates with a lot of uh, like GitHub, Slack, uh, and whatever. Right. So on Flare, let's actually uh, let's repeat the same thing. So instead of doing the Flare test, we will uh, repeat the same error. I'm actually still here, so let's just refresh the register page. And we should see probably the same. Nothing should change here, but uh, let's see what Flare shows us. So Flare, test Flare the project, and this is shown here. So it's more native way to view, uh, to view the exceptions. And let's see, yeah, it shows exactly register blade. It shows that's, that's interesting because uh, 
bug snack shows i will remind you shows redirect if authenticated as the last step of stack trace and flare shows uh, enumerates values so it's a little different even in stack uh, also what you can do here in flare you can expand the vendor frames or then probably make them go away let's scroll down a bit yep so vendor frame here uh, you can expand some stuff but uh, more or less you get the same thing as ignition uh, same request uh, basically everything you need and you can also share that with uh, with a teammate uh, basically that's it a quick demo of Bugsnack versus Flare they're really similar and for Flare they uh, have more integrations with Laravel I guess you should follow them on Twitter or their documentation what exactly they did and it's inside of ignition I've heard of ignition tabs have been created but I haven't tried it myself you can follow them and try it yourself and yeah report in this video which one do you like better or do you uh, maybe switch to flare or start using flare after it was announced or do you use Bugsnack or other one like there's roll bar there's sentry maybe some others and what do you think about Flare's future? Will it uh, fly and will it be a successful project for them? And even if it's not successful, they would use that internally anyway. So that's a win for them, for the team, for Spati and Beyond Code. Uh, and I do like that and I, I do like to support them. It's similar personally. It's similar for me to support Taylor by being a Forge and Voyeur uh, customer. Uh, so similar here, I want to support Flare. Uh, it's not necessarily better tool than Bugsnack, it's personal preference. And at some point we'll probably switch from Bugsnack to Flare, just because to avoid double payment for Bugsnack and Flare. But for that, the problem is that we cannot use Flare on older projects. So we have a few projects with Laravel 5.1, I think, and 5.2, so that wouldn't work. I think it requires Laravel 5.6 is the minimum, or 5.5. You should check the documentation. So yeah, but at some point probably we will switch to Flare because it does the job. Uh, and you can uh, customize stuff, project settings, so notifications, and there are more features, so check them out and read their documentation. That was it for this video. Follow the channel, subscribe, uh, hit the bell button to be notified of new videos, and see you guys in other videos.